Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the fourth in a series of video tutorials on how to create a mobile game in Unity 5. So if you remember at the end of last episode, we created this um, cube down here which will serve as the ground. Um, mainly because we created our rocket to be playable. So when we press play, we could control our rocket. Uh, when we attach the camera to it, if you remember, the camera followed exactly everywhere it would go, and we didn't want that. So we need to create a script in this episode which will allow our main camera to follow our rocket just on one axis. So in our script folder down here, let's right click, go to create and JavaScript, and I'm going to call this camera script. So, as I say, we are doing this in JavaScript, however, if you head to our channel and have a look at our Learn to Code in um, Unity 5, you can learn some C-sharp scripting in there, as well as JavaScript, and you can learn the process of converting between the two scripts. So you can easily convert JavaScript to C-sharp, or vice versa. So for now, let's open our camera script in Mono Develop or Visual Studio, whichever one you have. This script won't be too difficult. Um, we need to set a couple of uh, sorry a couple of variables and use two functions during the course of this script. Uh, the first variable we will call target. Now I'm calling it target because this is the target we want the camera to be focused on, which in this case is our rocket. So naming sensibly is always key in programming, uh, and that will be of type transform. Now this won't be a game object, it will be transform because we need to pull a couple of stats from it later on in the script, but you'll see why. Next variable, we want to have as the distance away from the rocket, so let's have it as distance, and that will be type float, not integer. The reason I'm saying float is because you want it to kind of be a little bit more precise than a whole number much in the same way we had the controls as um, a float rather than an integer. So let's make that equal to something nice and easy, 15. We can always change these later on, but we'll get around to that. The last variable that we will need um, will be the camera Y axis. So let's have that as camera Y. Make sure you don't have this variable as just camera. You won't be able to have that variable because the term camera is actually used in other scripts anyway. It's, it's not advisable anyway. This will also be of type float. And let's make that equal to, let's say, 10 for now. As I say, we can always change it later on. First function we'll need here is the update function. So function update and remember that is lowercase f and a capital U there. Open close bracket and open curly bracket. Now what we need to do here is we need to write a line which will enable us to make the position on the z or z axis of the camera equal to the z or z axis of the rocket but taking away our distance so we need to zoom it out from our rocket. So we can do that by transform dot position dot z and make that equal to the target dot position dot z taking away what we've set as our variable up here called distance. So we're taking away 15 from our current position of the rocket. Next line, we need to work on the x-axis. Now with the x-axis, you can either set this as a variable or we'll just do it as a number at the end. So if we do transform.position.x equals target.position.x. And then at the moment, you can have um, the rocket in the middle of the screen. So having the X position equal to the target X position will make the rocket dead center. If you put plus, let's say five there, it will make it more towards 
the left side of the screen, which is a bit more um, how an endless runner would look rather than have it dead center. So the higher this number you put here, the more to the left it is. The lower you put this number, say minus five, then the further to the right it will be. So you define that position there of where you want your rocket to appear. So close that with a close curly bracket. And the next function that we need is just called a late update. Open close bracket and open curly bracket. So this function will occur after your update has um, done everything it needs to do. The reason we put this next line of code in is because I believe it may not work correctly in the function update just here. Now, update can be a little bit temperamental. It doesn't like some lines of code. Another example is if you try to use the yield wait for seconds function in update, it will not work. Unity throws up an error and says, no, I don't like that. So with this one, we need to get the component. So to get component, capital G, capital C on there, dot, open spiky bracket, and we want camera, that's a capital C. And you can see now why we can't set a variable as camera, because we use it here. So it is not advisable to have camera um, as a variable. And then after you uh, close spiky bracket, open close bracket, the parentheses, and dot main, and we need to transform the position on the y-axis, and we now need to make that equal to the variable we set, uh, set sorry, as uh, camera y, which is 10. So we want our camera to be permanently 10 high. So camera y. And then after that, close curly bracket and save. Head back into Unity and hopefully we should not get any errors in our console. Let's clear everything there just in case. Yep. So that script we've just typed is completely fine. So next thing we need to do is drag and drop our camera script onto our camera. So just drag and drop in the hierarchy. Click on our main camera. And at this point, it doesn't actually matter where the camera is. Although you have a camera preview here, which looks fairly accurate, your camera could be miles away somewhere. When you press play, it will still go to the position it needs to go to. So down here, we have target, distance, and camera. You'll notice distance and camera is as we set them. And target is none at the moment. So we just need to put in the rocket. So drag and drop into that box just there. Um, I'm going to save our project now, just in case. Press play. Now I'm not expecting us to really see much when we press play, but the basics is there. You should see the camera moving along. So we need to adjust these settings here to make it look just right for our rocket. So let's have the distance still as 15. In fact, now let's put the distance a little lower. Let's have that as 10. And let's have the camera as five and let's see what happens. Let's see how it looks. Still not great, but let's change the camera setting to zero. And let's have a look. Okay, so that's a little better. Uh, I think I'd like our camera set at minus one. And let me set the distance as 12. So it's a case of playing with them numbers to get it exactly how you'd like it. And that looks fine. So next thing we need to do is we need to set our, in fact, no, do you know what? I think I'd like our camera a little bit further out because we're going to take the mesh renderer off this cube as this will serve as an invisible ground for us to fly on. So back to main camera, I'm going to zoom out to 15 and see how that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna put the camera as one rather than minus one. 
let's see. Okay, so I'm a little bit happy with that. Uh, I'm going to rename this cube over here and call it um, ground. I'm going to duplicate F2 and I'm going to rename this one as roof. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull roof all the way up to about there and I'm going to put the mesh renderer back on it as we need to see in our camera if the roof does appear at the top. And it does. I could probably go up another little bit. And let's turn mesh renderer off. So now when we try in fact, you know what? Let's move our rocket right to the edge there. Press play. So now when we press our space, we can't go any higher than our invisible wall. We've gone higher there because it's ended. But now we set our barriers both the ground and the roof so we can't go outside of these barriers. The last thing I want to do is just quickly explain that X axis. So our rocket is there but I'd like our rocket over here. So back in the script I'm going to change this to uh, let's say 10 and press play. And our rocket is getting further and further away. Or it seems to be at least. Um, oh, I didn't save that. Probably just my eyes there. So hopefully the rocket should be over here now in our screen. Yes, it, it's getting over there. So a bit more. Let's try 20. Oh, not 50, 20. Save. Let the script have a quick think. And then press play. And let's see where that position is. Okay, so now it's a little bit too far. Not to worry, let's have that as let's have it as 18 and save. So hopefully that should look just right. Yeah, that'll do. That looks fine. So you'll notice these numbers in our variable are still set as 15 and 10. However, in Unity down here, they are set as 15 and 1. So although you change the figures here, they will not change in your variable over here. So if you want to feel a little bit more comfortable with how it appears for you, you may want to change them here instead of changing them inside Unity. Now I'm going to save that script. And it won't make too much of a difference because they should stay the same. And they should stay the same, so that's all fine. Uh, if you have a little bit of a problem with this script, um, head over to our website and you can download it on there for free. Um, just copy and paste it into your Unity project and do the same as I have. Um, stick your camera script on your main camera and just try it that way. Hopefully you shouldn't have any problems if you follow along exactly as I have. Okay, so we'll leave that episode there for now. Um, next episode, we're going to be looking at a little bit more scripting. We'll also bring in some more textures. Uh, and we'll also look at particle systems. The reason I want to do that is because we want to have some obstacles throughout our course. And although we only have this tiny little bit of the course at the moment, in the next couple of episodes, we'll start working on building sections. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a random generator which will generate any one of say three, four, five, six sections. So the more sections you create, the more random your game is going to be. So that's what we're going to base this on, random. So eventually we're going to have some say stars to collect, um, planets to avoid, bits and bobs, space things, space junk to avoid using our rocket. Um, and we're going to start that in the next episode. So hopefully, it uh, shouldn't be too long to the next episode. You play around with your script for now. You get it exactly how you want it. You get it looking pretty decent. If you want your rocket to look less flat, maybe. Uh, you could always change that there. Hopefully, just... Oop, nope, wrong one. <laughs> you could always change it here. See if it's... Make it a little bit fatter. A bit thicker, rather than being flat like mine. Um, it's, it's just a case of how you want it to look.
So, yes, until the uh, next episode, have a play in Unity. You, as I say, you might, might want to check out our Learn How to Code in Unity 5 if you want to learn a bit of C-sharp and do this script in C-sharp. You can pick up from that uh, series over there. So, thank you very much for watching.